Hey guys, Brian and Aaron here from Five to Go. We are back. We are. We're back. We had to take a little bit of time off to deal with some personal stuff, so thank you guys for sticking around. Appreciate it. But we're back. We spend a lot of time talking about things you need. Things yes. that cost more money, like you buy an RV and then all of a sudden you have to spend like $1,000 more at a minimum to outfit it with a bunch of stuff. Um, that you do need. That you do need. But there's also a lot of stuff you don't need. Right. Right. Yeah. So and we of... talk about a lot of things um, in our Discord channel a lot. We True. answer these questions True. about things that people pop in and they're like, do I need this? Yeah. Do you need this? So this is inspired by yes. a lot of those questions. So instead of telling you what to go spend money on, we're going to tell you what not to spend money on. Uh, before we get to the actual content of this video, uh, we do have to say thank you to today's sponsor, which is Rad Power Bikes. Yay! Uh, we did do a video a couple months ago um, about the bikes that they sent us, and I realized that in that video, we did not show you how we actually carry them and why we went with the uh, foldable models. So we're gonna show you real quick because they are in the back of my car. So we're gonna pull them out real quick, and then we're gonna ride over somewhere to talk about the first topic in this video. Action shot with putting my helmet on. You ready? You ready? Ready. <gasps> Aaron thinks we're shooting a commercial. <laughs> and then I'm some high fashion model that has great hair. Yeah. Alrighty. And now you have it covered up. I'm on my yep. Way now. <laughs> Laundry, you're gonna have to do it, but do you really need to have a washer and dryer in your rig? We had one for 20 months in the travel trailer. If you go back far enough, we used to have a travel trailer. And it was very helpful and useful with the kids when they were younger and still like potty training. But we were running that washer and dryer combo unit all the time. If we were hooked up to sewer, we were running it beginning of the day till late at night, through the night sometimes just to get through because the loads were so tiny. And if we wanted to wash the sheets, we were going to the laundromat anyway, those sheets and the blankets and everything because those, it would just add so much to the amount of time we were taking washing clothes. Most campgrounds have a laundry room. No, they're all not as nice as this one. They are not all <laughs> as nice as this one, but even in some of the not so nice ones, I've found that the washers and the dryers are pretty clean because people are constantly using them and so they're not just sitting and getting like rusty and gross. Right. And if you show up to one of those, more than likely there's another one a couple miles down the road that you can go and check out as well. Because when you go to the laundromat, you can wash our family of five's clothes plus all our sheets and linens and towels and stuff in an hour and a half. So that was really just an excuse to go on a little ride because we really do enjoy those bikes. We do. The next thing we wanted to talk about was uh, these guys right here. Right there, slide toppers. Um, our first RV did not have them and I had to get up on the roof maybe a handful of times. Not that many. Yeah, not that many to sweep off, you know, pine needles or a branch would fall or there'd be acorns, you know, anything. Anytime you're under trees, it's just like stuff gets in your gutters at a house, it's kind of the same. Stuff can fall on the slides and you don't want to squish that up into the seal. Right. Um, we never had trouble with water. Like no. even if it was actively raining when bringing the slides in, they, the top would get squeegeed off. Mm -hmm. Like most of the water would come off. It was never like, we can't bring the slides in because it's raining. Right. However, with these, now that we have slide toppers, uh, you know we've done two videos now of replacing these things and dealing with them being broken. When we bought the rig, they looked like they were in good condition. They very quickly, the Work. seams ripped and we replaced them. This one here on this short slide has been okay. Mm -hmm. The one on the other side, the living room side, is a huge piece of fabric and it's a bucket. It just holds All the water. water. If it's dry, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. But when it rains, they can hold water. And then you can't just run the slide in all mm -hmm. the way because the water will press the topper down and it'll get pinched and it's a whole production. 
So I have to stand out in front of the windshield mm -hmm. so Aaron can see me from inside from the slide controls and I'll just do thumbs up or hold and she'll run the slide in and then stop and we wait for all the buckets of water to drain off and then thumb up and then stop, wait for more buckets. It's it a mess, It takes a guys. lot longer than it should. Yeah, you should just hold the button, run it in, right? It's like fine. I thought that's what slide toppers were for. Like it was just to keep everything clean. So this is all to say, if you don't have slide toppers on your RV, I would not recommend putting them on there. Nope. Unless you're gonna camp in the trees a lot it's much less of a hassle to not have them. Because also when the one on the other side broke, we couldn't bring the slide in until mm. I was up on the roof, cut everything, zip tied everything and secured it so we could bring the slide in to right. then move. So it's just, it's another system that can go bad. If the next RV we have doesn't have them, I am certainly not adding them. Nope. So, so that's my two cents on slide tappers. We've had a lot of conversations on the Discord server about slide toppers. So if you have some more input on that, either leave us a comment or join us on Discord and I'm sure this topic will come up mm -hmm. yet again. So <laughs> let's uh, move around to the other side. We have a couple things to talk about when it comes to sewer. All right, everybody, it's Aaron's favorite topic, toilet my, paper. My favorite topic? <laughs> toilet paper, okay. <laughs> toilet, paper. toilet paper is Aaron's favorite topic. I bet you didn't know that. It's not. <laughs> toilet paper, okay. You do not need RV or marine safe toilet paper. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Let me say it again. You do not need to buy the expensive RV or marine safe toilet paper. You're paying double for half the stuff. <laughs> and it's it's awful. It's awful toilet paper. Y'all know. Yeah. Okay. Do your bum a favor. <laughs> buy the toilet paper that you like that is septic safe. Mm -hmm. If it is septic safe, it is fine for your RV. The key to making it safe is use a lot of water. We usually use the Walmart brand of the strong, like mm -hmm. the Charmin strong, just because, you know, it works really well. Um, that one's fine. We don't have any issues with clogging. We use tons of water. It's great. Yeah. We are, caveat, asterisk, you know, note, we are full hookup campers. We are, we don't boondock. Yeah. And we always, we, we always have full hookups. So, so we always have sewer we can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you're like a boondocker or you don't have access to sewer a lot. Or you're conserving your water or whatever it is that you do. Or you have like a cassette toilet. Or right, what, just, know your stuff. We are full hookup <laughs> campers. This is for the rest of you that are full, full hookup campers. Right, full hookup campers, don't waste your money on all that fancy, not so nice toilet paper. Your favorite <laughs> toilet paper that is septic safe with lots of water is pine. And while we're on the topic of toilets and sewer and black tanks, please, please do yourself a favor. Don't waste money and time on tank sensor cleaners or trying to do all of this stuff to get your sensors to read right, you know, so you can walk up and hit the button and it goes to E right after you dumped and all that. It's not worth it. It's just, it's such a waste of time. It is. You can put all the chemicals in the world down there. The next time someone uses the toilet, there's a little bit of sludge on the sensor. Bob's your uncle. If you ask anybody who has been camping for more than three or six months, probably, they don't even look at their sensors no, anymore. You just know when you're yeah. full. Yeah. So, and one thing I like to tell people is uh, your toilet will burp. <laughs> I know, it it's sounds, a lovely it thing to gross, know, right? <laughs> but it's hard to explain. So if your black tank is full or getting close to full and you flush one of the foot flush toilets, instead of just immediately going down, it'll kind of go boop and then go down. Yeah. yeah. That, that, seen it. yeah. It, it's hard to explain, but it'll do that. And then you're like, oh, okay, go pull the black go tank. Go pull the blank, right? black and tank, yep. Real quick, always leave black tank closed unless you Thanks. are dumping. Gray you can leave open, it's fine. Or you can leave it closed, it's fine, it's up to you. Yeah. But always leave black closed. Yes. Every time I can say that, I'm going to say that. Only open black <laughs> when you are dumping and then you That's close right. it back up. Close it back up. Okay, so the uh, final little thing we want to talk about today is slide stabilizers. What's a slide stabilizer? A slide stabilizer looks like a little jack stand, sort of, okay. that you slide up underneath your slide to keep it from going up and down if the rig moves. Why wouldn't you need that? On older rigs, it was okay to use them on. Okay. Okay, that's why they still sell them, because older rigs, you could do that. The slide mechanisms were a lot different. Modern RVs and modern RV slide mechanisms, I don't know a year, I don't know when all of it changed over. I just know that the newer RVs that we've had and a lot of probably from the teens, maybe even 2010 up, the slide mechanisms are not made to be isolated like that. So if the rig is moving, the slide needs to move too. Oh. Because what can happen is if the rig does one of these and the slide has a thing underneath it keeping it from moving, you can knock the slide off of its track 
you can put pressure on the motor, you can bend rails, you can, oh, you can do all sorts of terrible things. So when you're wandering around Camping World or you're browsing through Amazon and you see all this stuff and you're like, man, the kids just won't stop bouncing. I need to <laughs> like just pour a pad of cement under my RV and just get it off the ground. When you're looking through all the stabilizer stuff, don't get slide stabilizers. If you have a newer rig. If you have a new-ish rig. Okay. They will damage your slides. It's Ugh. just a matter of time. If you need to stabilize your rig and you have a travel trailer, we can't do this with a motorhome, but if you have a travel trailer, get x chocks oh, that yeah. go between your wheels. That made a big difference There's for us. a couple other things that you can do. I will link to a couple older videos in the description down below. And also you can go to 5 togocom slash gear and that'll take you to our Amazon page and we have all of our stabilizer mm -hmm. stuff that we used on the travel trailer. And I think we got it locked down pretty good. Yeah, with the three kids bouncing around, it was not that bad. Yeah. So, so. whatever you did was great. Yeah. No <laughs> slide stabilizers. Don't get slide stabilizers. Don't get slide stabilizers. Don't get tongue twisters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it for our quick little list here. Um, I'm sorry that we didn't spend any more of your money today. Right. Although. But. Although. What's if your you butt? don't spend all this money on those things, mm -hmm. you can get yourself a red power. I knew where this was going. Yeah. <laughs> come hang out with us and we'll go ride. But it's kind of funny and slightly ironic that we're talking about not spending money in this episode. Right. And it's sponsored by a relatively expensive piece of equipment. Yes. But, but like they're she said, so nice. They're so fun. So <laughs> yes. if you can save some money in some of these other areas, get yourself an e-bike. Yeah. So there are links to Rad Power down below in the description. Thank you again for sponsoring our yes. episode. And uh, thank you for the bikes. They are super, super fun. And you are definitely going to be seeing them more in upcoming videos. Indeed. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to join us on Discord. We are in there talking all, all the, time. the time. You were in there at like 2 o'clock in the morning the I other night. I was until 2 in the morning talking <laughs> to some of the guys. Yes. So there are a couple thousand other RVers in there mm -hmm. of all skill levels. Some don't own RVs yet. Some have been RVing for 50 years. And some don't RV anymore but still like to talk about it. Yeah. So It's just it's an awesome <laughs> community. Totally free. 5 to slash Discord. Join us over there. Yeah. And we will uh, hopefully see you there. And we will definitely see you in the next episode because you're subscribed, right? Are Make subscribed? sure you've subscribed. Mike, are some you subscribed? Of, so is Mike subscribed? Mike better be subscribed. You better be subscribed, Mike. Go subscribe, Mike. Okay, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>